Firstly, right up front, I've heard you. You want more detailed mech tech design philosophy, digging into the weeds of the various technologies and systems needed to get our idea of a bipedal war monster off the ground, and I'm more than happy to oblige. However, for those who are new and unaware, I have three rules I try to stick by on this channel. One, don't pretend to know things when I don't, and if I'm going to speculate on things about which I'm unenlightened, make it abundantly clear that's what I'm doing. Two, don't speak on tired, old, or controversial subjects unless I have something new and or unique to add to the conversation. And three, never present my own subjective stance, opinion, or bias on a topic, no matter how well-reasoned I may think it is, as objective fact. The reason I bring this up here is to help frame the point that I'm neither an engineer nor a soldier, and I lay no claim to any form of expertise on either front. As such, those future mech videos might not be so regularly scheduled as these past ones have been. But for the present time, behold, the vanguard prototypes of my own hypothetical mech project, which I've chosen to call the Misses, or Modular Role-Playing System, both because it hearkens to the idea of ships being as surrogate or second wives to their captains, and because it opens the door for pilots to name their war suits. I can very easily imagine soldiers stomping around in machines with call signs like Mrs. Potato Head, Mrs. Magu, or Mrs. Krabs. Regarding the actual system design, obviously there's still much room for improvement. For instance, I photoshopped the wheels on there at the last possible minute, so they'll definitely require some rethinking for future versions. But as you can plainly see, the first of my two big working goals for this design is to keep the whole thing within the size and weight parameters of the average Jurassic Cretaceous Carnosaur, which ranged from between 2.5 to just under 10 tons. My reasoning being that these were some of the largest successful bipedal hunters ever seen on Earth. And while granted their prey didn't typically have thermal radar or ultrasound detectors, they didn't have our simian ingenuity to counter such things either. If absolutely nothing else, it seems to me the most logical jumping-off point, as I figure that it, their organic bones and muscle tissue, could hold up against the forces of an active predatory lifestyle, then surely a technologically advanced superstructure reaping all the benefits of postmodern science could do likewise. Of course, being between 7 and 10 tons puts the average mech in the weight class of an armored car, meaning squaring off against a tank would be an impressively stupid way for a mech pilot to die. Instead, I'm going with the logic that, like a prehistoric predator, the missus would rely primarily on ambush tactics to take out its preferred prey, which would likely be relatively light-soft targets, supply lines, infantry patrols, artillery, and light machine gun emplacements, etc. Relying on a configurable drone package, which I naturally forgot to draw, and the most replete sensor arrays their faction can afford for stalking, and high-volume munitions and ballistic ordnance, up to and including tactical nukes, for the kill. The unsung advantage of artificial muscles in this regard is that, as they don't rely on pressure pumps, motors, or an internal combustion engine, they run far cooler than a normal tank, or even an armored car or APC, and so would be much harder to detect when stationary, and having even semi-opposable limbs would make for greater ease at repositioning, especially if their mobility was within the ballpark of a carnosaur as well, which could supposedly reach speeds of about 30 to 40 miles per hour. The second goal being that all parts, mods, and attachments can be easily swapped, either in the field or in any available vehicle shop, with only the most basic familiarity with tools, electrical wiring, and normal vehicular upkeep being required. Speaking of which, you may also have noticed how many of the mech's features bear resemblance to those of existing ground and air vehicles. There's two reasons for this. One, because there's no sense reinventing the wheel, and two, the entire vehicle will ideally be built from pre-existing components the novel ones obviously excluded, or else they'll follow existing fabrication patterns, so any auto or aerospace manufacturer can easily, and cheaply, retool their production facilities accordingly, thus making it more economically attractive, and thus more likely to see large-scale commercial production, which would thence lower the supply and logistical hurdles. Now, working literally from the ground up, speaking principally of the main combat pattern, you'll see the feet are wide and broad, with clawed toes analogous to an excavator's bucket for grip on rough terrain, and, though you can't see it from this angle, thickly armored, though strategically porous soles permissible of explosive shock waves, but not of shrapnel. The legs are tri-jointed, which, apart from giving them the mechanical leverage for running and climbing, also affords them an additional layer of shock absorption and flexibility, and have adjoining wheels for additional speed on roads and regular, even terrain. Both functions I see as being essential to the combat model's role as essentially modern light cavalry.
using its advantage of dexterity to rapidly negotiate areas impermissible for ordinary vehicles. The wheels are, of course, puncture-proof, most likely filled with the same space-age metamaterial which drives the muscles, which I'll cover much more thoroughly next time. The pelvic region is a locked twin set of counterbalanced gyroscopes, meaning that when one spins clockwise, the other one spins counter in order to eliminate the torsion effect the vehicle would otherwise experience. Next up, the chassis would, barring the invention of some future hand-wavium super-alloy of some sort, be a tensegritous blend of various available materials, whose specific applications would depend entirely on that specific vehicle's requirements, where it was going and what exactly it was meant to do when it got there, as well as the overall mission parameters of the vehicle class as a whole, which, again, we have and will continue to cover elsewhere. And in that same spirit, the power plant would be a set of batteries and or fuel cells, depending on what's most readily available, fed by a redundant series of microgenerators, some renewable, others relying on combustible fuels. The standard armor, I imagine, as a titanium, or a suitable space-age equivalent cage with carbon fiber, or again a functionally similar endodermis, able to be mounted with a variable height of either specialty scales, such as reactive panels, ablative tiles, layered or laminate blocks, or just crammed with whatever random scraps of detritus the pilot or his mechanics happen to have to hand, and which could be as easily bulked up or stripped back in the field as needs demanded. As well, there would obviously be space for electromagnetic and thermal ordnance countermeasures, missile flares, EM and radiation shielding, etc. For weapons, pretty much anything that can feasibly be made into a turret can be added upon the missus's hardpoints. Everything from standard mortars, rocket pods and machine guns, to more avant-garde drone packages, energy weapons and possibly even electronic warfare or tactical nuclear devices, depending on the theater. And of course, these could also be fitted with extra limbs of varying purpose and effect, which we'll discuss more deeply at a later time. And last, but certainly not least, my control scheme and pilot interface would be most comparable to those of modern attack aircraft such as the Apache or F-22 Raptor respectively, where the helmet-mounted display not only allows the pilot to effectively see through the machine, but also allows him to seamlessly and intuitively guide weapons to their targets with a simple turn of the head. Now, ally that with an onboard AI co-pilot a la Cortana or Jarvis of the, I think, not-so-distant future, and you've got a truly deadly, dare I even go so far as to say, hyper-lethal, war-fighting creature on your hands. Not to mention one that would be all but immune to remote computer intrusion while being able to perpetrate such actions with impunity, assuming their enemy didn't have a near-peer model. But, even more than is this channel's standard fare, this is all just my humble speculative opinion. Let me know yours in the usual places, and while you're there, maybe consider checking out my books, linked in the description, if you're into the sorts of weird esoteric things I cover here and want to support me in a more tangible way. And as always, until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and remember to keep your mind open, but not empty. Over and out.